theory in a nutshell, common time rests. So if you've watched the um, simple time uh, video, we talked about these rests. And in fact, there is a 64th rest, which would have four dots here and a line. So yes, there's a 64th rest in, in simple time, but these rests are also used in compound time. But there are rests that we use in compound time we're not gonna use in simple time. As I said in the other video, just don't use dotted rests in simple time, then you won't make a mistake with them ever. Just, just don't use them. But we use them all the time in compound rests because why? In compound time, we're dealing with groupings of three. So three quarter notes would equal a dotted half rest. A grouping of three eighth notes would, do, would be a dotted quarter rest, and a grouping of three sixteenth notes is a dotted eighth rest. And the dots for these rests always go into that C space, or E space if you're a bass um, uh, cleft person. Okay, don't put them anywhere else. Now, what are our compound times? What is this groupings of three thing? Well, hopefully, you already know your time signatures because this is about the rest, using rest in them, but we have nine different compound time single signatures. They are called compound because there's two things going on. For example, in 616th, there are two groups of three sixteenth notes. There are six sixteenth notes, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, but they are in two pulses. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two main pulses, although there are six sixteenth notes. So there's two things going on. Each unit is a grouping of three in compound time, and that's so very important. Okay? The top notes are always six, nine, and twelve. As you can see, they're divisible by three. Six means two groups of whatever they are. Nine means three groupings, and twelve means four groupings. One, two, three, four groups of three sixteenth notes. Nine, eight, three groups, right? Divide by three, three groups of three eighth notes. And here we've got groups of quarter notes. They're a little harder to see because they're not beamed together, but there's a grouping of three and there's a grouping of three. Well, hard to see when they're all out in quarter notes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve groupings of three. So the top notes are always 6, 9, and 12, divisible by 3, and the bottoms are only 16, 8, or 4. There are no other time. That's it. Okay? Those are our compound times. Now, rest rules. A whole rest is used only for an empty bar in compound time. That's the only time we use it in compound time. Whole rest, just like, just like in simple time, so I put simple time and compound time in here. Doesn't matter what time it is. A whole bar equals an empty bar, okay? Now, a dotted rest, those dotted rests we talked about earlier, is now used for any full grouping of three. So here we've got one, two, three, and I think we're using circles. Circling them is really, really helpful. Four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, two groups of three. This is a dotted rest. Always use dotted rest for groupings of three. Okay, you will never make a mistake that way. Nine, four, one, two, three. Here's the middle one. One, two, three, one, two, three. Twelve sixteenths. Again, this one's a dotted eighth note. Because if you think about it, here's your dotted eighth note. The eighth note itself is worth two sixteenths, and that dot is worth half of itself. So there's your other sixteenth. That's why it's a dotted rest. A half note, two quarters. That dot is worth another quarter. An eighth, a quarter is two eighths. That dot is worth another eighth. So those dotted rests are our groupings of three. Okay, now we still have this wonderful rule, and it's so good and so important, that you cannot beat, uh, combine beats two and three into a larger rest, because two is always a weak beat, all right? You cannot combine from beat two into a larger rest, because two is always a weak beat. Okay, like one, two, three, four. Strong, weak, medium, weak, it's always weak. You can always combine empty beats one and two together, as well as empty beats three and four. I'll get more into that in a second. This is true for the bar and for each grouping of three, because now we're working in unit three, you know, units of three, groupings of three. So it's for the bar and for the grouping of three. Let me explain that. So six, eight, and again, I do suggest people put what they're dealing with on top when they're writing in their rests. 
if they want a visual. Visuals can be very helpful. So you've got one here, yay. And there's two and three. Two and three must be separated because one and two love each other. Two and three, uh, three and four love each other. But two and three, they are mortal enemies. They just can't stand each other. You must separate them. So one, two, three, they're separated. Okay? And then one, two, three, there's your grouping of three. That's a dotted rest. Okay, now nine, eight. We talked about this before. One, and, uh, two, three, four, four. There's three groups of three eighth notes. Now, groupings one and two can go together. So you wouldn't do that, you use a bigger rest because they're one and two. Okay? Over here, there's no line there. Over here, you've got one, two, three. Okay? There's your grouping of three. Two and three are separate. This is a grouping of three. One and two can go together. One, two, three. Okay, 12, eight. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you've got two more groupings to do. But this is grouping three and four. One, two, three, four. That's grouping three and four, so they are a larger rest. Okay, so one grouping would be a dotted quarter and a dotted quarter. Two dotted quarters equal a dotted half. You just go up to the next one for kind of thing. Okay, so two dotted quarters equal a dotted half. Now, again, we are filling in rests from small to large. Okay, so we've got six, eight, one, two, three. We need to do one, two, three. And we've got a, a 32nd and a 32nd, which equals 16th, right? 32nd, 32nd equals six. So we haven't got one eighth yet. We add that 16th in there, there, we've got our eighth. And then one and two go together. Awesome. Here, same thing. We've got two, two th uh, 30 seconds equals 16th. Plus the 16th equal an 8th. There's our first 8th. And here's 2 and 3, and they have to be separated. 1 and 2 can go together because they love each other. 2 and 3 have to be separated. And then you've got your grouping of 3 again. Okay? Down here, 9, 4. Now this looks like an awful lot of rests for one bar. So we've got 9 quarter notes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this first quarter note, we've got a 16th note. So we have to add rest to it. A 16th plus a 16th is an 8th. Add an 8th, you've got your first quarter. Two and two and three have to, well, we can't, there's another note there. Oops, okay. So we've got to put one there like that to make that eighth uh, quarter note. And we've got that 8th note. So all together here, that's our first grouping. I think I call that an 8th note. There's our first grouping of quarter notes. One, two, three. Now we have a second grouping and a third grouping, and we have to use a dotted hat rest for each one. And we cannot put these together because this is group two and three in the whole bar. It's not just within the groupings of three, it's the whole bar still. Remember that, it's true for the bar and for each group of three. So one, two, three is one. One, two, three is two. One, two, three is three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, and three cannot go together in the bar or in the grouping of three. I hope this helped.